Hello, I am Randy Hudson, and I am the NRIU Global Training and Technical Services Manager located at our corporate office in Riviera Beach, Florida. In this installment, I'll be discussing the durometer and why is it so important and what it can tell you about your engineer composite repair installation. Durometers come in many shapes, sizes, and styles. There are analog versions and digital versions. Durometers are like cars. You can spend a lot of money or very little. It has been my experience that you get what you pay for when it comes to the quality versus cost. There are many middle of the road products that work very well and will last. However, buying very cheap disposable types will also do the job and essentially can be thrown away at the end of a project. You can always purchase your own durometer, but NRI has multiple options available, including cost-effective option that is also available within a QC starter kit. Durometers are not all created equal. There are many different scales of durometers. There is type A, B, C, D, D, O, and E, not to mention several others. So it is very important to know which should be used for composite repairs. So what is a durometer anyway? A durometer is a tool used in measuring the hardness of a range of materials. ASTM D2240 is the most commonly used standard for this test as related to composite repairs. This test method measures the hardness of substances classified in the range of hard rubbers to plastics and this includes thermoset elastomers, which is where composite materials typically fall. In a nutshell, the ASME PCC2 Article 4.1 uses this method of hardness measurement to validate the cure of a composite repair. So I'll go back to my opening statement of why is it so important and what can it tell you about your ECR installation. By utilizing a type D durometer on an ECR system in conjunction with known cure schedules, it will validate the level of cure as indicated on the scale and the information provided on the QC documentation. Without a durometer, you can only predict cure based on basic material data, which utilizes time versus temperature scaling. This is not a complete method without a hardness validation and causes many ECR systems to prematurely fail as they are assumed to be cured and put back into service without final validation. We've all been there and done that. The pressures that clients and asset owners put on contractors to hurry up and the repeated question of when are you going to be done or how long before we can turn it on instead of guessing Give the client an educated answer based on the known properties and requirements set forth by the industry standards. The requirement as stated in the ASME PCC2 is that the material must be at least 90% of the material ultimate hardness measured during qualification testing. When the repair reaches the required hardness measured with a type D durometer, it is documented on the quality control paperwork. That is when you can turn it back on. When provided with the actual requirements from an industry standard, scientific knowledge, and the material properties of the system, the customer will respect that answer. I hope you found this tech short helpful. And remember, we want to hear from you. If you have a question about composites, the standards, or processes, please let us know.